This is James the Comic Book Shifu, and welcome to Read More Comics. On this week's episode, I want to share with you what was the seeds, the catalyst, if you will, of my passion for comic book collecting. Uh, it did start when I was a wee lad in middle school. Um, actually, not even with comic books, though I remember as I was growing up, um, oftentimes my dad would put a comic book in my hand. I remember uh, getting early issues of ROM. Uh, when I was a kid, my dad would just come home and give me a copy. Uh, there was an issue of Thor when he was in his golden armor uh, back in the early 80s that stands out to me. A couple issues of Conan. But it wasn't a comic book that was that catalyst. Uh, for me, it was actually a copy of this book here. Conan the Avenger by uh, Bjorn Nyberg, L. Sprague de Camp, based on the work of Robert E. Howard, has an amazing uh, Frenzetta cover. Uh, this was an ace publication. This is actually, I found this on eBay, is uh, a first edition, I think. Um, it was part of a collected work uh, published in several magazines way back in the late 1950s. Yeah, I'm looking at it. Uh, it was originally published in 1957. Um, this edition came out in 68. Um, and it was this book right here, uh, an adventure about Conan the King, uh, that got me into comics. Uh, this was in the early 90s. Uh, Conan the Barbarian, you know, Schwarzenegger's Barbarian had just dropped. I remember seeing that on HBO. Uh, and those things churned my interest. And one day I was at a local convenience shore, store, apologize, long day, Annunciation's a struggle. Looked over, there was a spinner rack there, and at uh, the local mini mart, uh, there was Conan the Barbarian. And that kind of kind of hit me. Um, at the time I was mowing yards, so I had some money to burn, you know. And this was the first issue I bought myself. I actually had it graded, okay, uh, to preserve it. Uh, this is a 5.5, <laughs> see right there. Um, I'd had it cleaned and pressed. It's all beat up. I read this thing over and over and over again. It has this stain on the back. Um, I'm not seeing it. Anyway, um, so I sent this to CBCS uh, because, of, um, and this was a number of years of pre-pandemic, I belonged to a, a Facebook group about comic books. And there was a guy who, you know, he lauded CBCS. So I sent it in there. Um, this was my first comic book that I purchased. And from that point, oh, I want to say the next three or four years, I was a Conan fan. I remember buying comic books for my brothers and sisters when I had some extra lawn mowing money because that's how I got cash. And, you know, I tried to just kind of share the wealth. Um, so uh, we jump ahead and this is going on 30 years, more than 30, eh, about 30 years. Um, and I find myself as an empty nester in a position where I have some time. And after kind of reflecting on my life and, and the things that I've enjoyed, comic books came back to my attention. Um, and Conan wasn't where I started as an adult collector, but it definitely, my interest in Conan the Barbarian continued. Um, first with Marvel, um, I tried some Dark Horse stuff and except for a couple exceptions, like uh, they did a Conan the King adaptation. It was, I want to say like 12 issues. Uh, maybe it was less than that. Maybe it was six total issues. I don't recall. Anyway, that was pretty good. The art was on point. It was drawing right from the story. Um, but except for that, I really didn't get in the Dark Horse stuff. It, it just wasn't my cup of tea. It didn't feel like the first edition Marvel stuff. And it, by this point, because my reading for Conan the Barbarian began with this, so it began with paperbacks that wasn't Robert E. Howard's stories, um, you know, that kind of spun my, um, my interest in sword and sorcery, okay? This is a very different story than a Robert E. Howard short story, one of those Pulp Fiction stories. And I know that now, okay? I've read Robert E. Howard, and I recognize there's a... A, a visceral energy in his original work that the successor works, um, they don't have. Don't get me wrong, love this story. I remember reading this in high school, you know, probably a dozen times, but it's not the same as Robert E. Howard's original work. 
Anyway, jumping back to it. Um, when Marvel picked up the IP, uh, when they got the license for Conan, I jumped back on board. Um, now, granted, by this point, I had a pull list. I was pulling a lot of books um, for my LCS. Um, not a lot of sword and sorcery stuff because there wasn't a lot that attracted my attention, a lot that held my attention. Uh, so, picked up Conan the Barbarian. Um, now, this is one of my first variants that I picked up. Um, I don't remember who this was from, but they'd got the license to use Arnold as the original Conan the Barbarian. And they even had, you could get signed copies of this. And in hindsight, should have done that because Arnold, to me, is Conan the Barbarian. Anyway, so I got this. Um, Marvel Volume 2 Run. No, this was Volume 3 because there was a six-issue Volume 2, which I've never seen in the wild. I've, I've seen it on eBay. I think there was only one sale, and that was a beat-up copy. So I decided not to buy it. Anyway, uh, Marvel, t Marvel Volume 2 wasn't too bad. The Jason Aaron original, you know, beginning arc, it was, it was engaging. You know, it had that same flavor. Now, at the same time, and I want to say this was... Oh, I'm drawing a blank. It wasn't AWA. It wasn't Oni. There was an indie company. I'm going to remember it in a moment. Uh, I'm going to have to come back to you probably in the comments after this because I'm drawing a blank. There was a small indie company that began reprinting original French stories. Well, they're not original, but the comic book was French because Conan as an IP is in the public domain. Conan the Barbarian, the title, that's trademark. That's a copyright. But the character Conan, it's not owned by Marvel. It's not owned by the Robert E. Howard estate. It is out in the wild. Anybody can make Conan stories. Anyway, this little indie company began reprinting in English. So it's, I guess it's a second print, I guess. I don't know. French art to original Conan stories. And they were on point. Okay. In the back of it, in the most tiny, the minuscule font you can get, they'd have the original story because that's in the public domain. And they had art that fit the story. Some of the art was amazing. Frost Giant's Daughter by this company is incredible. Some of it, like they did this um, Beelit and Valeria mini. I, I got it because I thought it would be good. And this is the completionist of me. I had to get the whole run. Um, it was okay. It got a little wonky at the end. It, it's like not very good Red Sonja stories, basically, with two characters. Red Sonja is entertaining. What uh, Dynamite's been doing is good stuff. What this company did with Beelit and Valeria, I hope they made their money back. But it's all the other work. And again, Frost Giant's daughter on point. Anyway, so we jump ahead and here we are now. We have IDW, no Titan Comics, sorry. IDW is having a bunch of financial issues, <laughs> not them. Titan Comics gets the IP. They get the license to publish. This stuff is, this echoes back to uh, the original Roy Thomas Basima art. It is incredible. They have big text boxes. Uh, the art, the paper, has the polish you'd expect in the 21st century, but it is an homage to that original work. And the story is ex excellent. So um, this is issue one. Um, they have only have two issues out, so re definitely recommend getting it. So what's the long and short of this? Well, because of my passion, in Conan the Barbarian, this, starting with this and Arnold Schwarzenegger, I got into comic book collecting. As a collector, you have to follow your heart. It's really easy to go a direction with collecting and picking up books that are the newest, hottest thing, the newest, hottest variant. And if that's what you want to do, that's awesome. You know, anybody can get into this hobby for whatever drives them. But I think in the long term, just looking at my personal and professional life, what really makes me want to keep collecting and keep reading is going for things that I have a passion for. Conan of the Barbarian is going to be one of those things. Batman, as you can see back here, going to be one of those things. If 
you like what you heard today, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, this was James Comic Book Shifu. I thank you for watching this week's episode.